About 2,000 years ago, a little baby called Jesus of Nazareth was born. Which is why, whether we believe he was truly the son of God or not, we now decorate our trees once a year and wait for a big guy in a red suit to come down our chimneys and give us presents. Makes sense, right? Now, if you thought Christmas was all about presents, eggnog, and holly jolly, whatever that is, think again. Around the world, Christmas is full of surprises. From its rich and varied history across cultures to some of the weird traditions that are still done today. For example, here in France, we have an evil Santa, which is just so French. Now, where did Santa actually come from? Why do we give each other gifts? And why do so many people eat mince pies when chocolate exists? To understand the weirdness of it all, we have to go back to the very beginning. Now, the actual roots of Christmas are still up for discussion, but what we do know is that it traces back all the way to 2000 BC, where some people started to mark the return of longer days after the winter solstice with celebrations. Now, obviously, most of you know that the word Christmas actually comes from Mass of Christ. Now, why we call it Christmas and not Christ Mass is beyond me. But anyways, having a name like that should mean that on that day, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, right? But that would be too simple and straightforward, so not exactly. For starters, the actual birth of Jesus Christ is unknown. Some say that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was told on the 25th of March that she would be having the Lord's baby, which logically would make us assume that on the 25th of December, Jesus was born, making the 25th of December Jesus Christ's birthday. But that remains unconfirmed. And many believe that that date was strategically chosen by the Christian church to weaken existing pagan celebrations and therefore pagan influence. Though later, during the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century, many branches of Christianity became Grinch-like and rejected Christmas celebrations because of its pagan influence. I mean, <laughs> make up your mind. All right, guys, we need to find a solution and make Christianity a lot more fun, okay? Because nobody is converting. We need something to make us stand out from those pagans. Yeah, but the pagans have a winter solstice feast. That sounds really cool. Well, you know what? So will we, and ours will be even Feastier, and 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 we'll do we'll do other fun things. Ooh, like what? Um, we'll we'll give gifts. Why would we do that? And people will give us gifts in return. Oh, okay, I like the sound of that. Oh, but wait, how do we explain to them that we want to celebrate that on the exact same day that they're celebrating? Um, what if we say it's Jesus's birthday? Huh? When's his actual birthday? Well, that's the thing. Nobody actually knows. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Then in the 19th century. Christmas had a little bit of a rebranding thanks to this little tree. Not this tree specifically, but the, the concept of these trees. Anyways, and this was partly due to the influence of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, who I guess just really liked putting ornaments on trees. Oh. I mean, to be fair, they didn't have Netflix back then, so what are you gonna do for fun when it's snowing outside? You know? <laughs> Mr. Hobbs, I'm bored. I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Your Majesty. I want to put shiny things on a tree. That sounds like a fantastic idea, Your Majesty. Shall I get your coat? Outside? No, it's snowing. Ew. But you... I just bring the tree inside. Uh, ex excuse me, sir? The tree! I want it inside so I can decorate it. But the tree will die. Yes, but it will be pretty. Now, trees aside, this period saw Christmas celebrations shift to family, goodwill, and generosity. In the 20th century, Christmas evolved into a celebration symbolized by decorations, gift giving, and various cultural traditions around the world. And figures such as Santa Claus and Mariah Carey became popular and synonymous with the holiday season. Now, Christmas across the world is full of myths and traditions, with some modern creations and some dating all the way back to ancient Greece. But obviously, the one we all want to hear is, where did Santa Claus come from? Preceding the jolly, white-bearded, ho-ho-ho, version of Santa Claus that we all know today, there was a real person called Saint Nicholas, a bishop who lived in third century Myra, 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 it's, it's Turkey, it's called Turkey today, and who was known for his generosity. Saint Nick's popularity eventually spread to Northern Europe, where obviously stories over time evolved and became embellished folk tales of elves and sky chariots and reindeers. I, I, I don't know how that happened. In the Netherlands, St. Nicholas took on the name Sinterklaas, which sounds like a sexy airline. He was depicted as a white bearded man in red clerical robes who would arrive every December on a boat to either give gifts or big lumps of coal to children. Then in the 19th century, the myth evolved and they added things such as throwing gifts down the chimney, the reindeers, and the whole living in the North Pole thing. While leaving treats for Santa and his reindeer dates back to ancient Norse mythology, Americans were the ones who introduced the tradition of leaving out cookies and milk 
on Christmas Eve, and we thank them for that. Now, although most of the world now celebrates Santa Claus, there are still some places, especially in France, where they still, to this day, celebrate St. Nicholas. They actually have a St. Nicholas Day on December 6th, which is a much bigger celebration for them than December 25th. Which is cool, I guess, but I, I, I just feel like Santa Claus is cooler, you know? Um, hey, sorry, Louis. Oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, I just heard that thing you just said about St. Nicholas. Yeah, and? Oh, well, I'm from Nancy, and uh, we celebrate St. Nicholas, and it, it's better. Um, okay, well, why don't you tell me why celebrating a plain old dude is cooler than celebrating a magical being who's known for being jolly and bringing gifts? Um, okay, well, well, St. Nick leaves shoes by the fireplace on December 5th, yeah, and, and when we wake up the next morning, we, we find little gifts inside of the shoes, so. Okay, so shoes with little gifts in them versus many gifts not restricted in size by the length and width of a human foot. Okay, but, but St. Nicholas is known for his kindness and his generosity, which is cool. Okay, Santa Claus is the rebranded version. He, he's the Terminator 2 of generous old man, okay? He, he's got a magical sleigh that takes him around the world in one night. He's got nine magical reindeers. He, he, he has an infinite bag of gifts. He, he eats cookies and milk. He's basically the rock and roll version of St. Nicholas. Yeah, that's fair. Speaking of delicious treats, where did the tradition of candy canes on Christmas come from? Candy canes are actually the number one selling non-chocolate candy in December and date all the way back to 1670 Germany. The red and white peppermint sticks arrived in America in 1847 when a German-Swedish immigrant in Ohio decided to place one on a tree, thus beginning their association with Christmas. Yeah. And now, speaking of tree decorations, it's widely believed that 16th century reformer Martin Luther was responsible for introducing candles to trees. According to legend, he was walking back home one winter evening, looked up, saw the sky full of stars, and wanted to recreate that on his tree. Now, of course, we use electric lights, which tends to burn down less trees. And what about the star on top of the Christmas tree? This tradition actually has religious and symbolic meanings. In Christian tradition, the star represents the star of Bethlehem, which, according to the Bible, led the wise man to the birthplace of Jesus. Christ, Christ mass, Christmas, you got it. Now, the star leads us to our presents, which is also nice. The star can also be seen as a representation of the star of David, a symbol of Judaism. Overall, the star on top of the Christmas tree is a symbol of the spiritual significance of the holidays and the guiding light of faith. Of course, despite many shared traditions, Christmas is celebrated in different ways across the world. So let's take a look at some of the more interesting traditions. In Ukraine, Christmas trees are decorated with artificial spider webs. This tradition originates in legend from the story that a widower living in a small hut with her children was too poor to decorate their Christmas tree. The story goes that the spiders in the house heard the children sob and decided to spin intricate webs around the tree. In the morning, the family woke up to a beautifully decorated Christmas tree. To remember this miracle, Ukrainians still decorate their trees with artificial spider webs to this day to usher in good fortune and luck for the coming year. Which actually means they could just recycle their Halloween decorations, which is Pretty smart. Now in Japan, surprisingly, Christmas is synonymous with KFC. Yes, that's right, as in the fried chicken. Now, although KFC's branding is red and Colonel Sanders kind of looks like Santa Claus, that's not the reason why. In the 1970s, the manager of Japan's first KFC had the idea to market the party barrel of fried chicken as the ideal Christmas meal. By 1974, KFC took the marketing plan national, calling it Kurisimasu Niwa Kentucky or Kentucky for Christmas. And yes, they just took the English word for Christmas and Japanized it into Kurisimasu, which is just fantastic. It's as if in France, we called it Le Christmas. The trend then caught on and became a unique phenomenon to Japan. Every Christmas season, an estimated 3.6 million Japanese families treat themselves to KFC in what has become a nationwide tradition. But let's not forget the French traditions. Yes, of course, like everything else, the French have unusual Christmas traditions. In the little Venice of Colmar in northeastern France, in one of the most famous Christmas markets in the world, can be found one of Europe's most heartwarming sights, as groups of children in red Santa hats sing carols on boats along the canal, which actually kind of sounds a bit creepy. Like if it wasn't during Christmas, you would think it's just ghost children that were drowned in that canal and you would just run for the hills. But that's not all. They also have Santa's nemesis. Yeah, that's right, evil Santa. Hans Trapp or Le Père Fouettard, which means Father Whipper. 
is an imagined version of an anti-Santa, taking the form of a large man dressed all in black, with large boots and chains, carrying a large sack and a baton, just ready to hand out punishments to bad children in the Alsace and Lorraine regions of France. Yeah, not terrifying at all. Let's try to see if the French have a less scary tradition. Ah, yes. 13 desserts. This one has my attention already. In Provence, south of France, one dessert is not nearly enough to celebrate Christmas. It's tradition to have not one, not two, but 13 dessert options after your meal. To be shared by everyone, maybe, I don't know. Depends. <laughs> Symbolizing the sharing of Christ. For all the weird and wonderful things about Christmas, you do have to consider that in the modern day, Christmas may have become a little too commercialized. I mean, have you ever noticed that the holiday season seems to start earlier every single year? I mean, I swear, supermarkets start selling Christmas products before the summer is even over. I mean, it's weird when you're wearing shorts and sunglasses and you can hear jingle bells in a store. Okay, guys, it's time to start prepping for Christmas. Wait, what Christmas was last week? No, Christmas is 51 weeks away. Yeah, that's plenty of time. Santa and his elves prepare for Christmas all year round and we need to start matching that energy. I love Christmas! Now, of course, there are recent concerns that the true spirit of the Christmas holidays is being overshadowed by consumerism. So let's take a look at corporate Christmas around the world. Post Thanksgiving shopping extravaganzas such as Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and the January sales have become synonymous with Christmas shopping. Nothing says thanks like 50% off a new PlayStation 5. These events can encourage excessive and impulsive spending with the more meaningful aspects of the holiday seemingly forgotten. I mean, nothing says the spirit of Christmas like 70% off a toaster oven that you don't need. Right? Let's be honest, Christmas is expensive. With such emphasis on buying gifts, decorations, wrapping paper, cards, parties, and food, it's hard to escape. The extensive array of Christmas-themed merchandise, from luxury advent calendars costing more than $2,500, to Christmas jumpers with sounds and lights built into them, can contribute to the perception that the holidays is more about consumer goods than the celebration of traditions and values. Although I do have a pretty cool reindeer onesie. Now, insanely, many countries spend more than 50% of their monthly wage on Christmas. Even religious symbols are used in marketing without any regard for their spiritual significance. I do like to believe though that for most of us, the holiday is mostly about giving and kindness and sharing times with your loved ones. But it's also about gifting me the new iPhone 15. Please, mom. So, what do we think? As a society, do we need to reframe our attitude about Christmas and go back to what it's truly about? Or is it okay to be swept up in the storm of months of marketing campaigns, endless food, and expensive gifts? Everywhere in the world celebrates Christmas in their own way. Santa and his cookies in America, and the creepy singing kids in France. To the cobweb pine trees of Ukraine, and the fried chicken in Japan. One thing is certain, Christmas isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every week. And Merry Christmas, you filthy animal.